Welcome to the video, Critical Information About Depositing and Withdrawing Funds from Forex Brokers. This video series covered U.S. FX Trading Regulations, U.S. Spot FX Brokers, Expert Forex EAs and U.S. Brokers, Offshore Spot FX Brokers, and this video, Critical Information About Depositing and Withdrawing Funds from Forex Brokers. Let's begin. There are some items to consider before funding trading accounts. Know your client. Money laundering laws and how they impact funding and withdrawing. You need to know about funding and withdrawal methods not available to U.S. traders. And of course, funding and withdrawal methods that are available to U.S. traders. Most brokers have some form of know your client rules. Generally, trading account owners must be verified with brokers. You will be asked to send JPEGs or PDFs of your passport and proof of address such as a utility bill. Your broker may require you to fill a questionnaire about funding sources, trading experience, and other information. Money laundering laws as it pertains to trading are very simple. Withdrawals must be made using the same method as your initial deposit up to the amount of your initial deposit. For example, you deposit $10,000 by international bank wire from your account at, quote, First National Bank. Your first $10,000 in withdrawals must be done by International Bank Wire back to your account at First National Bank. The second example, you deposit $10,000 via Bitcoin purchased at Coinbase. Your first $10,000 in withdrawals must be done by Bitcoin. Some final pre-funding considerations. As a trader, carefully consider your funding and withdrawal method. There is no changing it because you're not happy with it later. As a trader using offshore brokers, you are responsible to learn how to perform international transactions. Attention to detail is critically important when executing international transactions to fund and withdraw from your trading accounts. Typographical errors can have very serious consequences. You must have the correct and required information for your funding and withdrawal method. Some funding and withdrawal methods are not available to U.S. traders. These include Direct use of debit and credit cards. Banks and card providers have flagged offshore brokers in the same class as gambling. And offshore trading accounts cannot be funded via U.S. debit and credit cards. Skrill, NetTeller, PayPal, and similar services are also prohibited too and unavailable for U.S. traders. Three principal funding and withdrawal methods are available to U.S. traders, and the rest of this presentation will discuss those. International bank wire transfers, cryptocurrencies, and VLOAD vouchers. Let's get into the international bank wire transfers. Some brokers only offer funding and withdrawal via this method for U.S. traders. If you are funding with $25,000 or greater in a single transaction, this method makes the most sense because a $25,000 Bitcoin purchase through Coinbase 
also requires a wire transfer. If you are using a wire transfer to buy Bitcoin, you might as well do a wire transfer straight to the broker. It is better to fund a portfolio of smaller accounts than to fund a single large account for risk management and diversification purposes. Funding single accounts of $25,000 or larger offshore adds complication and is a lengthier process. There are some important cautions involving international bank wire transfers. Many traders omit key details or make errors in entering details, which cause wire transfers to go into limbo for weeks or even months. Forums like Forex Peace Army are rife with complaints against brokers, mainly from disgruntled traders who botched wire transfers and blamed the broker for it. If you have trouble reading, listening, following instructions, or paying attention to detail, then international wire transfers and trading for that matter are not for you. This business is not forgiving of mistakes. Seriously, you must be honest with yourself about the above point before you proceed, because you will have no end of problems if you make mistakes with international bank wire transfers. Now we're going to discuss bank IDs. An international wire transfer identifies sending and receiving banks and accounts using one or both of the following. A BIC or SWIFT code or an IBAN number. Some banks use both numbers, others use one, but not the other. When you fund your trading account, your broker will provide either or both a BIC SWIFT code and or an IBAN number. You will need your own bank's BIC SWIFT and or IBAN number, both to fund your account and to receive your repatriated withdrawals. SWIFT codes. BIC means bank identifier code, and it is the same thing as a SWIFT code. SWIFT means Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Here are some links for your reference, and these will be provided in the video description. SWIFT codes identify the bank, country, city, and branch where the account was opened. SWIFT codes follow a standard format, which you will see on the next slide. A SWIFT code contains four segments, the bank code, the country code, the location code, and the branch code. Now, IBAN. IBAN means International Bank Account Number. The IBAN number differs from the SWIFT code in that it identifies all the way to the account number, whereas a wire transfer using SWIFT requires a separate entry field for the receiving account. The IBAN consists of five segments in this order, country code, check number, bank identifier, sort code, and the account number. Here is what an IBAN looks like. You can see very clearly the country code, the check number, bank identifier, sort code, and the account number, all five groups. Some final words on international bank wire transfers. You must have the correct address of the branch where you opened your account. The broker must also provide you with their bank's account home branch's address likewise. Some bank employees are not familiar with 
or competent in performing international wire transfers. It's simply not something they do every day. If you suspect this to be the case, do not proceed until you find someone who is competent. Even if you are doing everything right, if the bank employee misenters something, you can have major problems with your wire transfer. Most brokers do reimburse bank wire transfer fees. Now we're going to move on to cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are the preferred method of funding offshore broker accounts. They work well for accounts ranging from $10 cent accounts all the way up to $24,999. Once you own a cryptocurrency, account funding is completed in a matter of hours, whereas international wire transfers can take days or even weeks. There are many ways to buy cryptocurrencies, but for U.S. traders, we are going to focus on what is common and standard. Coinbase, and Bitcoin. The first step is to buy Bitcoin on your Coinbase account. You can do this with your debit card via ACH out of your checking account or wire transfer. Debit cards offer instant availability, but come with lower purchase limits and higher fees. ACH comes with limits up to $25,000 and lower fees. Funds require six days to a week to clear in your Coinbase account before becoming available to send. Wire transfers are used for purchases greater than $25,000. This simple graphic shows the process for buying Bitcoin. Now we're going to move to sending cryptocurrency. Follow your broker's process for funding your account. Generally, this is the procedure. You'll go into your broker back office and deposit to your trading account. You'll select cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. Some brokers require that you fund out of a wallet because exchanges like Coinbase are slow in broadcasting the required three confirmations. Check before you proceed. If the wallet is required, you'll have to send the Bitcoin to your wallet, then send it from the wallet to your trading account. Some brokers that had this set up are now allowing direct transactions from Coinbase. So the intermediary wallet requirement is becoming passe. When you fund, you must send the exact amount of Bitcoin you are instructed to send on your account's deposit page. You will be provided with a QR code which you can scan with your phone and use the Coinbase app or you can copy paste the address on your web browser. You must use the exact and correct address provided. You can lose your entire deposit if you make finger errors. Almost every broker provides QR codes and copy paste with Bitcoin addresses. There is absolutely no excuse for this to happen to you. If you are funding a $1,000 account and your deposit instruction says to send 0.11 Bitcoin, set your Coinbase send box to Bitcoin and enter 0.11. Do not use $1,000 USD. If the rate changes and you send any amount other than instructed, the deposit will be rejected. A rejected deposit will require you to get a refund back to Coinbase, then you'll have to reset and you will pay a second set of fees. Brokers do not reimburse cryptocurrency fees. They absolutely will not reimburse additional fees incurred by rejected deposits because you sent an amount other than instructed. 
Now let's discuss confirmations. Once the Bitcoin is on its way to your broker, the transaction will need to be confirmed three times on the blockchain. It takes as little as 30 minutes and up to four to six hours to confirm. Take a break and let the process work. If the funds don't appear in your trading account after six hours, contact your broker. They may just need to approve it and apply it on their end. Once the funding appears in your account, it will reflect accordingly in your balance and equity, and you are ready to trade. If you are a profitable trader, let's talk about the fruit of your labor, withdrawals. Withdrawing and repatriating your profits is really the reverse process of depositing. Most brokers provide an internal wallet and your withdrawals will go here first. You'll find this very helpful if you are operating a portfolio or a group of accounts as you can deposit profits from multiple accounts to your internal wallet, then make a single withdrawal. If the broker does not have an internal wallet, you can kludge one by having a trading account that you do not execute trades on. You'll send the exact amount of Bitcoin from your internal wallet to your Coinbase wallet. Once the Bitcoin is in your Coinbase wallet, sell it and deposit the funds to your dollar wallet. Now you can send the funds to your debit card or your bank via ACH or wire transfer. The same limits, fees, and hold times apply on the receiving side as the sending side. Remember, ACH is used for larger transactions, but comes with hold times that could be a week or more. There are no exceptions and no flexibility with this, so you need to factor hold times into your withdrawal. Don't contact Coinbase with a sob story about why you need an exception. You won't get one, seriously. The final funding and withdrawal method is VLOAD. So let's introduce that now. VLOAD is a range of electronic vouchers that are purchased in varying denominations or a custom denomination in what is called a bundle voucher. VLOAD vouchers can be purchased with debit cards and wire transfers. VLOAD has three tiers of registration that allow you to purchase up to $500 in vouchers per year, between $525,000 in a year, and greater than $25,000 in vouchers. VLOAD fees currently range from 2% for wire transfers and 3.5% for cards. If you are using VLO to fund a trading account, use the bundle voucher for an unlisted denomination. Do not buy multiple vouchers to create the desired amount. You will be using one VLO voucher to fund your account. Withdrawals must be made the same way, so withdrawals will go to a VLO bundle voucher. The voucher is then cashed out and the current cash out fee is 0.2%. Like every funding and withdrawal method, VLOAD has its pros and cons. First, the pros. VLOAD vouchers are simple to buy. They are available in United States dollars, euros, and Japanese yen. VLOAD vouchers are simple to pay with. And VLOAD vouchers are instant. The cons. Not all brokers accept VLOAD vouchers. However, more brokers have started accepting them in the past year. VLOAD fees are high compared to Coinbase. At around $1,300 and up, a bank wire transfer is cheaper than VLOAD. Brokers do not reimburse VLOAD fees. Before we close out, let's review this important risk disclaimer. 
Futures, options, and currency trading all have large potential rewards, but they also have large potential risk. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in these markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. This is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy or sell futures, options, or currencies. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed in these videos. The past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. This video covered funding and withdrawing from offshore broker accounts. This is the final video in our Expert Forex Information for U.S. Traders series. The next step is for you to take this knowledge and start trading. Thank you for watching.